This was engraved on stainless steel using the Xtool F2. It's readable from all angles, it's really sharp, and most importantly, it looks absolutely amazing. In this video, I'm gonna show you the full process, how to engrave a high contrast photo onto stainless steel so that it actually looks good when it's finished. I'll walk you through the Xtool Studio setup, the image prep, the actual material settings, and then the mistakes to avoid to make sure you can get something like this. Because if you've tried engraving onto stainless steel before, you know it is the holy grail. It is one of the hardest things to do, but we will teach you how to nail it. So stick around and we'll get straight to it. I wanted to begin by just showing you the different types of stainless steels you can get out there. You can get stainless steel hip flasks like this. There are little clips. You can get the little blank tags like that. You can get the standard dog tags that you see. Then you can buy the actual sheets like I've got here with the protective layer on. There are others out there, but what we're teaching you today applies to all of them. However, like I said at the start, better the quality stainless steel, the better your results. Another important element is cleaning your part before. So I use a 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol I also use a kitchen towel, one of these strong ones that don't fall apart because if you take a look at one of my dog tags, you'll see it's covered in fingerprints. So if I were to be doing this, I would give it a spray. I would pull off some of this and just give it a wipe just to remove any fingerprints, any blemishes. And then what you will end up with is a nice fingerprintless stainless steel surface which you can engrave onto. As I said, I'm gonna be engraving directly onto this. This comes with a protective film, which I'll be removing at the last minute. So I won't need to do it with this, but I wanted to show you it on normal items, just so you understand that it's a very important step to take. I'm gonna be removing this cover. I'm gonna take extra care not to get any fingerprints on it. And as you can see, it's a lovely shiny layer, which is great. That's exactly what we need. And there we go. I'm then gonna place it onto my build plate. No jigs required for this particular one because it can just sit there. And then the next thing we are gonna do is focus the laser manually. I wanna mention something at this point as well. You'll see our dots aren't focused. And normally on all my videos, I do a manual focus and then we do an auto focus in the software. However, you will find with these shiny surfaces, the auto focus nine times out of 10 will not work. So it is very crucial. We manually focus the laser and we will be doing that using the knob on the side. And as it shows you right there, turning it clockwise moves the laser head up turning it anti-clockwise moves the laser head down. As you can see, our dots are apart. So I am gonna be moving it clockwise, which will move our laser head up and allow us to join those dots together. As you can see right there, we are now focused. Let's move over to the Xtool Studio software. So here we are on our familiar Xtool Studio screen. We are gonna click new project in the top right. It should automatically connect to your F2 if you have it turned on and it was the last machine you opened. And with the new Xtool Studio update, which I'll be doing a video on soon, they now have the picture automatically update when you do it. So that's good. If you've manually focused your laser before you power this up, it means your screen is automatically filled with an in-focused background image, which allows you to get started without having to do anything. That's always a good thing. It's one less thing to worry about. Regarding stainless steel, the first thing I would recommend doing is updating your material to a stainless steel setting within Xtool Studio. So I'm gonna use a default 304 stainless steel. Um, I have my own one set up. We're gonna go through this from the scratch beginning so that you know the full process I would go through so you can take it yourself and then you can go back and look at one of my previous videos if you do wanna save your own custom material setting. So we're gonna click apply and then up the top right, you will see it has now updated our material. The next thing we want to do is import our image. So let's do that. I have one of Jack Reacher, great TV show, by the way. And I like engraving this on some things because it shows a lot of definition. It has a nice color variation and it's a really great test piece so that we can really push it and see how it comes out. And as you can see, we've got it in here, but the bounding box on it, which is that blue outline box, is far bigger than what I like it to be. I like it to be as close to the image as possible. So if we do an outline frame, it then shows us the correct outline. Um, with the new Xtool Studio update, and as I said, I will be doing a video showing these new features they've added. There is now actually features at the top row that allow us to quickly, before we had to click edit and then go in over this side on the left. Now, however, we can actually click on crop on the top. I like to manually drag the box as close as possible without actually overlapping the image, as you can see there. Click save. And then we have our image ready to go. 
So one thing I want to tell you, in this tutorial, I'm actually going to be trying to engrave this big, okay? And what it means is the processing time is going to be really long. Don't worry about that for you. You're not going to be doing it this big. I just want to do it big so that I can, one, I can have a nice image at the end to show as a result. And two, just to see if it works because I've, I've done it on a smaller surface and it does work. I want to do it on a big surface now and see how it comes out. So now you'll see we've got our image and it is colored. And what Xtool Studio will try to do is define its own settings there. I can tell you they don't work very well. You'll get a very yellowy image. It won't be viewable at certain angles. What we're doing here today will give you a contrasting sharp image that you can view from all angles. And trust me when I say that, that is what you want. So let's go on to adjust up here. Or if you're using the older version of Xtool Studio still, it's edit and then adjustments. And as I've been doing in all of my videos, I am going to be using auto adjust because I am very impressed with it and it does a really good job to give us at least a starting figure. What I will say is the reason we pre-selected stainless steel is because I believe, and I haven't been given definitive proof of this, but I believe the auto adjust sees what material you've selected, looks at your picture, and I think it tries to come up with whatever it deems as the best solution for that material. So we're gonna click auto adjust, and it's gonna then up the contrast, up the sharpness, adjust the balance of it, and you can see we have got a pretty good image there. However, I am now gonna go through my mindset and my concept and my process of adjusting an image because what I will say is when you're dealing with shiny surfaces like stainless steel, a white part of the image is gonna be very bright. And sometimes if it's white on the image, and I mean really white, it won't actually engrave. And what you'll end up with is a partly engraved image and a partly shiny surface. And we don't want that. We want all of this image to be engraved. So we're gonna adjust the settings to make it look like it's gonna work. I think that would work probably 90%, but I think that little shiny spot on his head there would actually be too shiny and it may not actually engrave. So I want to adjust the settings on the left over here to actually get some good solutions there. So what are we going to do? So we are going to firstly reduce the contrast. And I think normally I go to about five, maybe 10. We'll try minus five. And I'm going to also reduce the brightness to about minus 10. I'm going to see how that looks, okay? So that's a little bit too bright. Let me go back with the sharpness and up the brightness. So as you can see, this is all about adjustments, okay? We want it to be clear, have clarity, but we don't want that white spot to be too white. And to be honest with you, what I've got there looks quite good. I think if we engrave that, all of that image will engrave, even the light patches around the hair, the light patches on the head, but also the dark parts aren't too dark that they would just look black. They would look toned. We want that. I also often like to click on the grayscale tab and I sometimes drag this bottom one up to like minus 10. And what it does is it adjusts that balance of grayness or grayscale. I mean, if you put it really high, it would go really dark. If you put it zero, it'd be light. I like to go, I like to tweak that sometimes as well. And what I will say is you can select the little kind of gripper there and then use the left and right arrow keys to manually adjust it. I'm going to keep the sharpness the same. I'm going to keep the, so I'm going to go with these settings. I'm going to have minus 10 contrast, minus five brightness. I actually think that will come out looking nice. So there you go. We have our image adjusted. We're happy with it. Looking at that, I personally think it will engrave well. Those settings on the right, as I said before, they won't be good. So we need to apply our own custom settings to it as well. Okay. We need to know that they're going to work. So I have done some testing and I'm going to show you right now what I've done. So I'm just going to take a second to talk directly to you guys because I want to show something to you. And this is for anyone who's wondering how I get my settings. This is the testing I have done with this with stainless steel. OK, so I started off with a general test using an image of my head cropped and I took the best settings from there and then I refined it even more with the dot duration and the DPI on this side here. And then when I got a good one here, I then refined it, if I get it the right way, I then refined it even more with this set here to try and get the settings optimized. So this is what I mean. When I say I've got settings for you, I promise you I've put in the time and effort to give them to you. They're not always gonna be 100% foolproof, but what they will be is good enough to get you in that ballpark to get started. So let's move on. Let me show you the settings I actually came up with and we'll apply it and we'll see how it engraves. Okay, so we are back on our desktop and we've got our image. So let me show you the settings I came up with. So as I said to you earlier, I've set up my own stainless steel 304 custom material. 
I just wanted to keep it simple, but what you can do yourself if you want, once you've got that 304 stainless steel setting selected and you update it with the settings I'm gonna show you or whatever you refine down, you can actually add that to that existing material to keep it simpler. Like I said, I've done a video showing you how to make custom materials. Check that out on the channel. At this point, I'm also gonna ask you if you are enjoying the video and you're getting something, please subscribe and like. It really helps and even comment down below to let me know how you get on. So let's move on. Let me show you those settings. We are gonna select stainless steel 304 custom and you can see I've got photo engraving here. It's gonna ask if you want to re auto adjust it. Say no to that or keep as is because we are happy with what we've generated. So what are we doing? We're gonna be doing infrared light, 2000 dot duration, 80% power and 800 DPI. And we're using Jarvis mode and we are doing one pass. So those are the settings we're using. Try them out yourself, see how you get on. We are gonna engrave this. And like I said, this is gonna be big. So it's gonna take a long time. I am gonna leave it going in the background. I will speed it up and show you it. And I wanna give you the results at the end because we can see, I'm actually not sure how this is gonna come out hopefully well, but either way, let's go through it together and let's do this. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I am actually gonna frame this image. So go into the bottom right here. Framing is always a thing we need to manually do. I mean, in this case, we've got a big surface. It won't matter if it's off. However, what I will say is with shiny surfaces, if you engrave directly down onto it, sometimes the laser can reflect back up and damage itself. So what I recommend doing sometimes is offsetting it so that when it's engraving, it's engraving at an angle, which means it bounces off at an angle and doesn't hit itself. What I will also say is I have actually done it directly underneath on previous occasions. So far, I haven't had any issues. That is down to your own judgment to decide if you want to do that. Okay, so we've got our image there. We are now gonna frame it. So down here on the bottom right, you can either do outline frame or rectangular. What I would say is put that light power up because it's gonna be hard to see it on the shiny surface. We're gonna do a rectangular framing in this case because that bounding box pretty much represents the image. We don't need it to be any more definitive than that. Click that button right there and then we're gonna go and check to see if it's okay. I will do my best to show you that framing box. As you can see, it is difficult with the lighting, but it is framing. I also wanna say at this point, we are using the IR laser, but even though you can't visibly see it, it will still damage your eye. So either close the lid or wear safety glasses and also have your extraction either going out of a window or down to your air purifier. So let's move on and let me show you how this engraves. So I framed it, I'm happy with how it looks, but I have made it a little bit bigger again because I just wanna fill that stainless steel out to a massive amount, so that's gonna look good. But if you were doing this on a dog tag, it would be a fraction of the size, but the setting should still work. So we're gonna click process now, but let's see how it comes out. I think it should look good, but you never know. So let's click that start button. It's gonna give us a fire detection warning, click continue, and then you will need to click start again. Once you hear the beep, then we're good to go. So let's see how this looks, and I'll show you the results straight after. So here we have the finished article. I mean, look how detailed that is. All of the resolution has been retained. It shows all the different shades, which is exactly what we wanted. There are no shiny patches. I mean, the muscles, the shirt, the scar, the blemishes, the hair, it all looks absolutely brilliant. I'm sure you would agree. So there you have it, guys. Once again, I'm gonna show you the results. They look absolutely brilliant. I hope you've learned something new. Subscribe to the channel, like, because we've got so many good videos coming your way. And what I would like to say, if you are interested in buying an X-Tool F2, check out the affiliate link in the description. We also have a really, really useful, helpful community, X-Tool F2 owners and X-Tool makers series groups on Facebook. We have brilliant communities. Everyone's willing to help. So check those out as well. They are also in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have something useful from this video. Subscribe, like, and have a great day.